three, two, one. All right. Uh, so today I have with me a very special guest. And um, considering the events of this morning, where is my first guest? <laughs> And uh, his name is Mike Payne. And Mike Payne and I have known each other for how long would you say we've known each other now? Since about 10 years, 11? 12, I think. 12? Yeah, 12 years. Yeah. Um, we originally went to high school together ish. And uh, we uh, have kind of taken similar paths career wise. So, um, the main reason why I wanted to bring Mike on is he's been kind of a mentor to me and he's also kind of a self-taught developer, kind of the same thing that I am. So I figured we would talk a little bit about that today and just kind of, you know, maybe kind of divulge any, any, any trade secrets or just kind of just what some of the learnings that we've had over the years, um, considering we have been developers for as long as we have. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, Mike, tell us a little bit about yourself. A little about me. Uh, I am a creative technologist at a creative agency in San Diego called Vitro. Uh, that kind of just means that I cross paths between creative uh, thinking, concepting, and developing. Um, historically, I did a lot of my, my coding in WordPress, PHP, a lot of front-end stuff. Um, over the years, I've grown to be a lot more platform agnostic. So I can jump in and work, uh, work with a Laravel platform or a Drupal system or WordPress or completely like from scratch, uh, whatever needs to be done. Um, I'm not too tied to like one specific tool, um, which can help and hurt depending on the, the business case, the pitch that you're trying to win. Um, you can go kind of either way. Uh, as you said, I've been developing uh, for about 12, 13 years um, in a professional setting. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's, that's kind of like a, a rough yeah. outline of who I am. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, but yeah, that's great. Yeah. So you've been working um, in the kind of the programming sphere for about 12 years. Um, but what would you say kind of, and kind of what I want to kind of focus on here is that you have gone from you know, somebody I knew in high school to like being in the position you are now and it knowing what your educational background background is ahead of time. It's quite an amazing story. So I want to kind of talk about should that. I, should I like spill the beans up front? Like I, I, yeah. uh, I dropped out of high school, like <laughs> zero actual education. So, yeah. uh, whenever you look at like self-taught developers with no education a lot of times that's like no I, I still have like a four-year degree or something but mine's like legitimately dropped out senior year started working uh and haven't gone to a class since yeah that's that's one of my like favorite things that about your story is that you know from high school you've this is kind of like you found your passion right away and just like jumped in with both feet so let's kind of like take it from there. So we tell me kind of like, you know, what your story is and why you decided to kind of, you know, what, what drew you to web development and then kind of how when you ended up kind of cultivating your skills. Yeah. So web development is kind of like the perfect culmination for someone that's just generically interested in computers. Um, cause it allowed me to dig into a bunch of smaller sub segments of it. Right. So it involves, um, obviously programming, like writing code. Uh, but it also involves multimedia. So actually, like, you need to know design in order to actually translate it to code. Um, so you, you dig into um, Photoshop and Illustrator, and now there are systems that are, um, like, like Sketch and, and Zeppelin and, and systems that are much more designed for designing websites than what we used back in the day. Um, I think you and I even built a website in After Effects once, uh, we had an After Effects element to it, yeah, for that yeah, uh, Skills USA thing, which uh, you probably wouldn't do anymore, um, <laughs> at least not in the same the same way. Oh, we're not doing that uh, anymore. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> um, we can we can move back around to that. There are some cool ways to tie those in. Um, motion graphics with web. Oh yeah. But um, anyway, so uh, there's coding, the actual multimedia part of it. And you also have to dig into like networking and how a computer works so that you understand, you know, if this asset that I'm trying to put on a website, if it's a, a video file that's 30 megs, I need to understand how that's going to translate it from the server to 
my laptop or my phone whenever I'm out on the go and that the, uh, what kind of issues you're going to run into with that. Um, I'm, I'm full stack by nature. So I, I do a lot of backend development too, um, which means I, I need to know how to like set up a server, uh, like spin up a new AWS instance or work with, um, digital ocean droplets or in some cases I, I just have an SSH access into a client server. Um, so I need to know how to go in and, and use those without, um, screwing everything up, I guess. Yeah. Uh, no, that, that's one thing that I find really interesting about kind of like the current role of a developer is because there used to be kind of this very hard line between front end and back end. And now like nowadays you're kind of expected to do front end things, back end things, and on other sides. You're also like expected to know how to, like you said, kind of understand the connections between servers and make one yourself when needed, that kind of stuff. It's really interesting. Yeah, so you might not need to be like a full back end engineer and architect, um, but you should know, like even if you're a front end developer, you should know how to, how to manage some of those things. Um, and it, it can feel overwhelming as I'm like saying all of these like uh, verticals that you can drop into. Um, but I mean, in most cases, if you spent, you know, two or three weekends um, digging into some of the terminology and like really basic hello world examples of whatever uh, Goes discipline you're trying to attach. Yeah. Um, then those will be whittled down pretty quick. Um, I think by year three or four, I had a, a pretty decent grasp on most things. Um, now, like 13 years in, you just pick up way more as time goes on. Yeah, that's uh, one thing that you kind of alluded to is that like when you are wanting to be like a good front end developer, you kind of have to know about those other things. You don't necessarily mm -hmm. have to be an expert, but at least being aware of those is goes a long way. Yeah, um, there's a good mindset that goes along with that. Um, uh, there's a really good uh, advertiser by the name of Ogilvy who had this uh, mentality that you need to be the second smartest person in the room, except for when it comes to the discipline that you're dealing with. In that case, you need to be the most smartest person in the room. Hmm. Uh, so uh, understanding that there's, uh, there's other people with, with much more education in whatever uh, discipline you're kind of touching. Um, you should still have like a, a pretty strong grasp on the fundamentals of whatever that is. And right. uh, that doesn't come overnight. No one's expecting you as like a, a junior or sometimes even a senior developer uh, doesn't necessarily need to have, you know, a, a decades and decades of computer science uh, under their belt. But uh, yeah, uh, definitely an eclectic um, skill set is, is helpful. Yeah, definitely. So, so how do you feel about specializing then? You kind of said that you kind of have a wide breadth of, uh, of, uh, of skills. What, what, how do you feel about like, you know, those who just like, you know, I do Python and nothing else. Uh, there's definitely a niche for it. Um, I see it in pitches all the time. I'll be going up against a, a dev shop that um, specializes in exactly the one stack that, uh, that the client is is requesting and I might be like somewhat familiar with it, but they'll be like, no, we are, that's all we do day in, day out. We've got one guy that just dedicates to front end, one guy that just, just dedicates to back, or it might be a team that's just front end, a team that's just back end. Um, and the people within those are, are pretty siloed into like doing the same exact thing day in, day out. Um, and it, it can help, um, in that you you need to understand like the little intricacies of if we're going off of python you need to understand like just the little intricacies of how that works on on a server or if you're you know compiling it into an applet and uh, even within those like uh specific rails that you're setting um there's still a bunch more things to dig into within that um so like python's like an entire language but then there's all the like libraries that you pull into it um if we go off of like a uh, WordPress developer. There's still like subsets of like front end, back end, plug in, theme. Um, are you like selling things to mass mass deliver? Are you like selling your plugin or are you just spinning up a, a website kind of on its own? So I I'm not sure that there is really like a um, a dedicated 
front end, back end anymore. I think it, it all kind of blurs together at, at some point. It's just kind of the degree at which you uh, kind of blur those lines. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. I, you definitely start to see that. And like, even if you do kind of specialize, the di- further you dig into it, the more you realize that you have no idea what's actually going on in there. Like you just like, the yeah. more that you know, the more that you realize that you don't know everything. <laughs> yeah, a computer is just a rock that we like put a thunderbolt into and then like <laughs> tricked it into thinking. Yeah, yep. it, it's all magic at some it, point. It's all magic at some point. Exactly. That's what I tell everybody at work when they talk to us developers. I don't know. It's just like magic. So yeah. we just learn how to push the right keys at the right time to make the website. I learned to Google the right thing. Yep, exactly. And that kind of like the Googling the right thing actually kind of brings me to kind of our next kind of point here is that kind of going back to your, your formal education, quote unquote, like how do you feel like that was um, advantageous or disadvantageous to you um, now looking back? Uh, I was really paranoid early in my career that um, I, I wouldn't be able to get a job because I didn't have a degree or a, I mean, even a like high school diploma. Um, but really quickly understood that uh, no one ever really asks about that. If you just leave your education off of your, your CV or your resume, um, people will look for other things on it. And the, the primary thing they're going to look for in, in our industry is uh, your portfolio, the things that you've actually done before. They care, they care way more about like, what can you actually accomplish? What can you do? What can you prove to me? Um, as opposed to like, what classes did you sit through a couple of years ago and whether or not those may or may not be a- applicable. Um, so uh, disadvantageous, it, it definitely like um, knocked my self-confidence in the beginning. Um, advantageous, it uh, kind of opened the doors. Um, the position that I'm in now didn't exist 10 years ago whenever you know, we were getting into this industry. Um, so not really like setting those guardrails or having someone else set them for me. Um, if I went through like a boot camp or a, a dev program at a university, um, they'd have like structured, like this is, you know, intro 101, this is uh, 102, and the, this is like the advanced class. And the topics that are in there, I think kind of like streamline you into a specific way of thinking. Whereas um, I, I think the successful developers that I know um, are much more like uh, solutions oriented. They're like, all right, we've got a problem. There may or may not even be a, an answer for this. Um, but are there other people out there? Are there resources that I can tap into? How can I you know, Google this solution in the best way uh, yeah. to find a solution? And it might not even be like, I need to find the solution right now. It's like, I need to find two more keywords to add into my Google search in order to like find the next step and just making that like a little bit of progress um, helps a lot. So uh, yeah, advantageous. It, it definitely builds up that like Google foo uh, mentality over the years of just, yeah. I, I can't rely on someone else to teach this to me right now. I need to just find an answer. Yeah. That is uh, because makes it so you're kind of in charge of your own, oh, um, um, charge of your own um, sur- in your surroundings at that point. Like you're, you're kind of relying and you've built up this foundation of resources and you've built up this foundation of just kind of scrappy know-how. And now all of a sudden you can tackle a lot more situations versus like, you know, they never covered this in class. <laughs> like I, I really don't know how to do that. And it's not like, you know, the, the classes are, are all about, using your resources. I mean, there could be nowadays, but I mean, from the days that I've understood and the people that I've talked to, it's like, that's not really a thing. You kind of, you know, you're, you have a very structured way of, of kind of going throughout the degree and it covers very specific things and, you know, varies from college to college, but it sounds like it's, it's all about just kind of exposing you to a lot of different little things, but it's still ultimately up to you to kind of dive into those and then you're kind of back to where you started where you're like all right well now i gotta open up google and learn more about this thing and how it applies to the real world so i feel like by you know kind of skipping that you've not only saved yourself a lot of money but you've also kind of uh jump started kind of your learning i would say would you agree to that um 
jumpstart might be a strong word. I think in the beginning, I, I definitely felt like it was slow learning. And um, I'm not sure I would have felt that it was any faster if I had gone to like a, a structured program. I think in the, like you're, you're just always going to feel like it's slow at the start. Mm-hmm. Um, That's a good point. But it, it's definitely given me more uh, stamina through my career, I guess, um, that I can, I can take those principles I learned early on and a- apply them to new projects, to new technologies. Um, one thing I was really paranoid about, um, you know, 10 years ago, whenever I was intentionally avoiding school was um, this thought that uh, they're, they're running you through a program, they've got a curriculum, but it, it takes a while to put together a curriculum and it takes a while to get that approved and start teaching people. And I, I've seen this time and time again, someone goes through like a four year degree by the time you're done, the, the, the curriculum that you have is like at best four years out of date and uh, technology moves so fast. If they're covering like the core basics and you on your own are going out and, and digging into like the new tech, the new libraries that are coming out um that's great but uh i think if you rely solely on just the curriculum that someone else puts together for you um you're gonna fall flat yeah no i think that's kind of because of that exact reason i think that's why these boot camps started to emerge so kind of like i when i mean you and i were were around uh, learning all this kind of stuff boot camps didn't exist so going we're back, boot camp, yeah. we were we are pre boot camp. So that really dates us for all those who are watching. Um, but how would you, would you like say you were kind of back at at square one again? How would you feel about those boot camps? Did you, is that something that you would advise your past self to to take advantage of? Um, that's a great question. Um, <clears throat> so boot camps are are a little weird. They um, I, I've hired a few developers that have come out of boot camps, um, and it it just kind of highlights the the things that you can and cannot teach someone in such a short amount of time. Um, mm-hmm. Though a lot of these developers will come out of a, a boot camp and expect like, oh, I'm going to make like eighty grand this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's probably not going to happen. Um, that might not happen for a long time, but um, you can get a job, um, and and the thing that like they they really can't teach you is the desire to keep learning once the boot camp's over. Um, so I've had some that come in and uh, immediately slay it and, and uh, are their funda- uh, fundamentals, their foundation is solid. Um, and they, they keep learning, keep growing. Um, and then I've had others that come in great foundation, everything that was in the boot camp, solid, but that's just where they stopped. They're like, all right, I got the, I got the boot camp cert. I'm, I'm a developer now. Uh, there's, there's nothing else I can learn. And they just kind of keep that mentality moving through. Stagnate. Uh, yeah. And you, and you just kind of stagnate. The benefit of boot camp is that it, it's really rushed at the beginning that it, you just dive straight in, you start writing code, you start making uh, errors early on and you, you fail quick, you fail fast, you fail often. Um, fail hard. And you, you, you <laughs> fail hard and you uh, have to pick yourself up and keep going. Um, so I think they can work for the right people. Um, and I, I think for the wrong people, the, uh, they might have wasted a bunch of money on things that they could have Googled themselves. Yeah. Um, I think that's really interesting. And as I mean, both of us have sat on kind of the other side of the table when it comes to hiring developers. And so yeah. it's, it's really interesting is that the, the boot camp only means so much. It definitely shows like, Hey, you know what? I care about this. I want to do specifically this. Um, and you know, I invested my money into, into learning about this and here I am. I want to cash out on that. Um, but there's, there's kind of that other layer to the whole interview process. It's like, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you've done that. That's great. Um, but like, what, what, where does your passion lie? And where does, where does that kind of, like you said, you're going to have two identical candidates come out of the same boot camp, but like mm-hmm. one is going to be the kind of person that took what they learned and then like, you know, maybe went home and like created like a, an app out of something that wasn't part of a tutorial series or wasn't part of the curriculum itself. They went the extra mile to like 
I like this stuff and I want to like keep doing it. Not yeah. to the point where they're burning themselves out and they're like, this is all I live and breathe. But like, there's definitely that where it's like, you can definitely tell that somebody likes this. And that's something that definitely will get somebody the job over somebody else. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a fine line between like passion and burnout. Um, and I think you kind of touched on it there for a minute. It's, uh, it's crucial that you actually like what you're doing because I mean, with any luck, you're going to be doing it for the rest of your career. And um, I can tell you right now, the like Angular library that you're working with right now or Vue, um, it's going to be totally different in a year, in six months. Um, they're going to keep releasing it. They're going to, a new library is going to come around. Um, we'll have the new internet that's not even powered by JavaScript at some point. And you have to keep learning. Uh, like, through your entire career. You can't yep. just like stop day one. Everybody um, get on the web assembly train. Yeah. But at the same time, you you need other things in your life that you enjoy and that you can like mix it up with um, or you're going to get burned out real, real quick. And if there's a way for you to like kind of merge those together, um, try it. Like make a website about golf or about... Uh, you know, make a, make an app that like tracks your golf scores or make a, make a website that um, houses all of the like amazing uh, Korean soap opera videos that you love. And you just have like a giant index of all of those. Um, try and like merge those together, but I would never make that your sole like uh, point of income. Just do it as like a way to kind of mix things that you like together without the expectation that like, I'm going to retire off the money that I get from this. Cause that that'll like expedite the burnout. Yeah. Yep. No, that's exactly true. Like the, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a tight rope to walk and it's definitely like, there's a lot to learn and people are, are like, I mean, my Twitter feed is full of people like, you know, posting new languages, posting projects that they've published, all this kind of stuff. And it becomes overwhelming and it makes you feel like, Oh, I have to do that too in order to be successful like these people. And I think that it's kind of slow and steady wins the race a little bit. It's like, if you can, like you said, find something that you like and kind of chip away at it. Um, I think it was a uh, shoot. The CEO of, of Shopify said that he never worked more than 40 hours a week. He was just liked what he was doing and just kept it kind of within that, that time frame, and, you know, look at where it is today. So it's, it's definitely 40 hours is a good amount of time. Um, yeah. And if that's what you're getting paid to put in and you don't need to put in over time, then yeah, st step away from the computer. You're a, you're a better, more well-rounded person if you have other interests in your life besides just staring at a screen all day. Yeah, exactly. Um, one last thing that I want to uh, touch on because we're running out of time um, is just kind of like some of the resources that you kind of might say somebody was brand new to this whole thing, you know, they're, they're a self-taught developer. Maybe they, you know, have built a WordPress theme or two, but kind of want to level up their skills, um, you know, kind of in the area of JavaScript, HTML, CSS, PHP. What kind of resources would you say those persons, uh, those people should uh, take a look at? If they're watching this video, they're already on it. <laughs> they're watching WP Cast. Oh, excellent. Uh, that's all. Okay, that's all, folks. That's the only resource you need. There yeah. you go. <laughs> on a high note. Uh, but no, like YouTube, you're not alone. There are you know, hundreds of other developers, other people, other mentors, digital mentors that are out there that are you know, sharing all of the things that they've learned over the years. Um, so yeah, uh, your stuff, uh, lynda.com. They're recently, like in the last couple of years, acquired by LinkedIn. So they've like really been pouring more resources into that. Um, Egghead has a bunch of like great videos. Really there's, I mean, there's, there's probably, I don't know, 20 just like micro courses. Um, it, it depends on like the specifics of what you're trying to go after. Um, probably the biggest resource I think is the, the documentation, the, mm -hmm. the things that like people have written specifically for you to understand the language or the, the platform that you're, you're working with. So for WordPress, go read through the codex. Like, right every day just like take five random hooks in wordpress and look at like all right where is where is this hook is this an action is this a filter uh 
what is this doing within the larger picture of WordPress? Um, I don't need to do anything with it right now, but uh, just immerse yourself in like the, all of the different ones that are out there. And then a project might come along. You're like, all right, I need, uh, I need this string to be serialized in a certain way before it hits the database. I need, to, this is the hook I need to use. Mm -hmm. um, and I can, I can just filter the response out and then I don't need to keep rewriting this function every time I do it. I just add in that one hook and trust that it, it functions the same way with angular, with view, they've got documentation, they've got tutorial series that are like provided by the actual developers. Um, that is like the starting point. And I think a, a lot of it all over is just going to skip over that and go straight to like, all right, let's jump into a tutorial and like learn on the fly. Mm -hmm. um, but like there's, there's tons of documentation out there and, uh, art, uh, yeah, read, read the gosh dang documentation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, that's actually like, I'm surprised by your answer, but I actually really like it because I think that's not something that people would normally think to spend a ton of time on because there is kind of this kind of culture right now where it's like, everybody's teaching and they're selling courses and stuff like that. And they all kind of have this kind of fun hook to it. Like we're building um, a fish store or we're building a, like an API that or weather app or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And like, you're kind of getting a very narrow view about everything that could be going on. Yes. It's like a real world application. So it can kind of tie things together for you. But I think to your point that, there is a lot of like underlying basics to this whole thing that you're completely like grazing over. And yeah. I think that it's less important about like, how would you accomplish this versus like, why would you accomplish it this way versus some other way? And you're only going to know that other way exists if you have read through the documentation and you've, and you've kind of have a solid understanding of what you're working with. Yeah. So. All right. But I think that uh, wraps it up for this. Um, uh, again, everybody, this is Mike Payne, uh, Twitter handle. Uh, what is it? At the Mike Payne. The underscore Mike Payne. Uh, the one and only. Just me. Oh, just you. One and only. Just me. And then um, anything else you want to let anybody know about before we sign off? Uh, no, stay safe. No handshakes. No hands uh, Fist bumps only or Zoom yeah. only. The, the introverted nerds are taking over the world. Uh, now we can all be, you know, socially introverted from our own apartments. So stay <laughs> safe, be happy, read the documentation. All right. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thank you.